Hey everyone, the Game Chief here. Today I'm going to be doing a video on Omega Manager, and I'll be going over the good, the bad, the ugly. So you know, stranger to the side, I did actually want to talk about Omega Manager a bit and go over some of the pros and cons of the server managing software and give my overall thoughts on it. This video is broken up into three parts. Timestamps are on your screen right now as well. So Omega Manager is a program created by CF Tools slash Philip. Um, that runs on your Windows machine or Windows server that helps automate and assist you in running your DAISY servers. It helps automate deploying, restarting, and updating your DAISY servers. It has several advanced features, including automatic mod updates with fast server restarts. More in-depth information about Omega Manager can be found on the wiki page as well, and that is linked in the video description. Before we get started, I just want to give a little bit of context to this video. I first heard about Omega Manager quite a while ago actually, and I either didn't look at it closely enough or I just didn't like it for some certain reason. So at the time, I started my DayZ series using bash scripts that were made from a mix of stuff found on the internet with my own additions and changes and different tweaks and stuff like that. This worked for the most part, but I had several issues and problems I never really expected to come across and didn't come across until I had thousands of people following the videos on the subject. And then kind of after a while, I saw that there are some weird edge cases that people are always having issues with that I didn't see beforehand. So I kind of wanted to search out for a different solution that may make it a bit easier. That's why after being suggested a few times to take another look at Omega Manager to see what has changed since the last time I visited, I went ahead and said might as well. So went ahead and got started looking at it again. And well, let's just say it's a lot. Let's get started. So let's talk about how simple it is to use Omega Manager. Straight out of the gate, I really got to give it to them for how simple it is to use. So I was able to create a DAISY server and join it in less than 12 minutes. So that includes downloading all the files and stuff like that. It was fairly fast internet speed, so internet speed wasn't really a big factor in that. So it took about 12 minutes to download the, um, the actual program, Omega Manager, get it started, put in my credentials, and get everything downloaded and join the server once everything was started. So very fast setup time. Omega Manager also has a lot of advanced features I really like. Um, one of the first ones that I really liked was the multi-server support. So while it's most definitely possible to have several servers running with just using a couple of bash scripts, which I do have videos on that subject actually, it can be quite a pain to set up sometimes and ensure they're properly working, depending on how the script checks for the EXE, how everything's pathed out, ports and all that. In the past, I've actually just created separate VMs on my server to host each server. And in the end, that was actually easier and it didn't cost a lot of extra resources besides losing a few IPv4 addresses in that case. The way Omega Manager handles it just makes it easy. Deploying a new instance with Omega Manager only takes a few minutes or so to do. So that multi-server support is most definitely a plus, and I've been playing around with it, and I really enjoy it, actually. Another thing I really like about some of the advanced features is the automatic updates. Omega Manager has the ability to trigger a game server restart whenever the DayZ game is updated or when a mod you're running gets updated. And these restarts are actually fairly fast because the way Omega Manager downloads the files in the background beforehand, before shutting down the server. And then once everything's been downloaded, it can go ahead and trigger a shutdown automatically based off of an uh, interval that you can set. So you can say, you know, give players a five minute warning or whatever, and then it'll shut down and restart with the updated mod files. So no need to really manually restart or anything like that. It'll do it for you. This is also why deploying a new instance is so fast. Omega Manager keeps a deploy folder, which has an entire copy of the game ready to go, which can be copied to the new server folder instead of waiting for the files to download. One little drawback to this, I guess, is it is increased storage space being used um, because of all the copies of the game it ends up keeping. Um, depending on how many servers you're having, that can be quite the size very fast. So that's something to keep in mind. Another feature I really like that's built in by default is backups. Um, by default, Omega Manager will backup your server every time you start it and on an interval, which I believe the default is one hour. So the backup will include your player database and a few other important files that it decides to back up. And you can also change how often it backs up. You can't make it any more recent than like say one hour, but you can make it every two hours, every three, whatever you find is a good number for you. But the fact they have that built in is a big plus. And the final advanced feature that I really like is the API access that you can have. It does require a control panel instance, which we'll go over a bit later on in the video, 
but it allows you to do some granular control and you can really do a lot of different things um just kind of play around with it. there's a ton of documentation on it so if you're more of an advanced user this is something that you could really dive into Another really good pro is the helpful Discord that they have. The CF Tools Discord has almost 2,000 members and has a ton of helpful people and ways to get support. A link to their Discord server is available in the description as well. Another thing that I really like is their detailed wiki. So CF Tools has a very detailed wiki on all of their products, including Omega Manager, and it kind of goes in pretty in depth into certain things, um, certain configs, issues, stuff like that. So it can be really helpful when you're trying to figure out how exactly something works, and it can be really useful if you're doing more than the basic create a server for your friends and kind of set it and forget it type of thing. And the final pro that I have is that Omega Manager is kind of dummy resilient. It makes creating a basic server very, very easy. It's honestly kind of hard to mess things up, um, which is important since a lot of people just want to create a simple server to play with their friends. Omega Manager really covers this use case and it's kind of dummy resilient. I would definitely want to say dummy proof. You can still break it if you try hard enough. But if you're following basic instructions, you should be fine. So I think that's a big pro, especially for those who aren't, you know, making a big server that's trying to do something for their friends. And moving along to the cons of Omega Manager, um, the first one I noticed, and it's kind of a picky thing, but it's the automatic restart and the restart span that can come with it. Um, whenever you trigger an automatic restart or it's triggered by a game update or a mod update, all the players will get spammed with a message saying the server is going down for a restart and it will do that from the time of the grace period is set. The default grace period is 60 seconds, so you're gonna be seeing that spam in your chat every single second for 60 seconds, um, and it's just gonna keep saying that the server's going down for a restart. Um, the problem here is some people like to increase this um, from say 60 seconds to five to 10 minutes or so, especially for people who are using helicopters or other stuff, people to get back to base, all that stuff. You don't really wanna have a 60 second warning, it's a little unfair. So when you have the 5 to 10 minute warning, it's just kind of spamming that entire time. And it can just be kind of annoying, um, and it'd be nice if that wasn't the case. Personally, I would find it better if we could specify an interval to send that message on. Um, at the moment, it's unclear if that's a planned feature, um, as it has been mentioned on their Discord a few times with some mixed reactions. So it's just one thing that would be nice to see it changed. The next thing I noticed, which is a bit of a con, is the fact that there is no automatic restart slash scheduler. So this means you can't set up like a six hour restart or whatever. Um, the only time it will automatically restart is if a mod gets updated or if the game gets updated. So there's no kind of way to do that um, within Omega Manager by itself. While you can still use Beck uh, to do the restarts, um, which I'll have a video on how to implement Beck into this as well. Um, it would be nice if it was built into a mega manager and didn't require something like Beck or a control panel service slash instance as well. And the final con or like disadvantage of using a mega manager is going to be the quote unquote paywall. I've mentioned it a few times in this video, but CF Tools has a service called Control Panel. And Control Panel allows you to have one free instance with two ban lists, 72 idle time hours, uh, 31 days of logs, email discord alerts, and a ton of other cool features. The real problem here, at least at the time of writing, is the free instance, which is that one free instance I was talking about, is at capacity, so you're actually unable to get the free instance. And the only way to access this control panel service slash instance is if you get on a wait list by contacting them via their support system, and they can like email you one once available, and times kind of vary on when you'll get one available for you. Or you can donate 10 euros as well to get immediate access. Um, so that's kind of one thing to keep in mind. And while I have no issue with people getting paid for their hard work, it's a bit disappointing to see the free tier is at maximum capacity. I went ahead and created a list of features currently locked behind the control panel service slash instance. The first one is a server-sided mod that gives you access to the map of everything along with statistics such as kills, deaths, space building. So there's a plugin you can run on your server that basically just gives you a ton of data that you can go through and you can even set up different things with uh, like the API on what to do with certain data, send it to Discord messages, stuff like that. Um, there's custom ban lists as well, which you'll be missing out on. Uh, different ping limits, so you can set a ping limit on something. Um, so if someone's you know joining and their ping's too high, it can kick them. I'll give them a few warnings first, stuff like that. There's the reserve slots module as well, which you'll be missing out on. 
And there's even filters for private Steam profiles, profiles of VAC bans, players using a VPN, uh, geolocation blocking, IP blacklisting, and other security features. There's also the whitelist module and the messenger module. And there's also a module for player joining slash leaving announcements. And again, those alerts with Discord integration, so you can get email alerts and Discord integration. And then the final one, which I really wish um, wasn't kind of blocked behind it, is the scheduler. This module allows you to create a full schedule for your server. So it has the option to kick all players um, right before a restart, which can be really helpful, give you know, a normal warning, set up an entire restart cycle, essentially. And again, I have no issue with paid services. It supports the creator along with helps cover their server hosting bill, which can definitely get a little high depending on how much you're doing. And from the infrastructure I've seen, it can be a bit pricey. I was actually able to acquire a control panel instance, so expect some videos on that very soon. But for this video, I want to keep it more about the core Omega Manager experience and not really cover that just because there's not going to be, not everyone's going to be able to access that. So we're kind of trying to cover more of what you get with the regular one versus having the control panel and all that. But I've gotten to play around for a bit and we'll have some videos on that soon. So from my final thoughts, I decided to focus only on the offline version of Omega Manager without a control panel instance for overall, my overall thoughts. Um, and being real, I really like Omega Manager. It's a great program if you just want to create a server for friends and add a few mods. Uh, the mod management in general is one of my favorite things about it. If you are hosting a actual public server, using Omega Manager can be really nice as well, but I'd probably suggest at least getting on the list for the free instance so you can get access to those features that are on the control panel instead. That or you can just donate some money, 10 euros is really nothing, it helps support an awesome person in the DayZ community, so it can make sense if you are opening a public server that can work as well. So for the verdict, I am switching my current server over to Omega Manager, and I'll be having a video on the process of switching everything over from my old batch scripts to Omega Manager um, out soon as well. Um, I think batch scripts still have a place in some use cases, but if you're just making a small server or if you don't have a huge amount of technical knowledge, or even if you do have a lot of technical knowledge, there's going to be some cases where batch scripts make sense and other cases where Omega Manager makes sense. But in my case, Omega Manager makes sense. I think for most people, it probably does. So that's why I'm going to be switching over. And that's about it. It's very likely I forgot something or made some sort of mistake or there'll need to be a correction. So make sure you check the video description and the pinned comment for any corrections. Um, I'll have some more videos out soon, hopefully. I anticipate having more time over the next two months or so. So keep an eye out for those new videos. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video or join my Discord server, which is always in the video description. And other than that, have a good one.